Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday once again, and every Tuesday we get to play a game. Today we played Bandita, a cool little sequel to the game called Bandito, where we are trying to stop Bandita from escaping from jail by closing off all these tunnels on the table. The game becomes enormous despite being in a tiny box, and Bandita gives us the option to either stop her from escaping or help her escape. We'll talk about all of that in just a second. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Glenn, Ian, and Gordon, and before we talk about the game and everything we liked about it, we're going to get into how to play. Welcome to Bandita, a cooperative game where we're going to try to stop Bandita from escaping through the tunnels. When the game starts, we can choose which side of the Bandita card we want to play with, the one with five exits on it or the one with six exits on it. Fewer exits is usually easier, so today we played with five. Each player is going to start the game with three cards in their hand, and all the cards in this game are more tunnels, so when you play a card, it's going to extend the tunnels in various different ways. On your turn, you're going to play one card and then draw one card to replace it. Now, some of these cards have very specific scenarios where they'd actually be useful and help you close those tunnels down into fewer tunnels and connect tunnels together. Some cards are going to be just plain great and helpful in closing the tunnels down, and a lot of those have flashlights on them to represent a dead end. Now generally our goal is to connect and then close off those tunnels such that there are no exits available for the Bandita before we run out of cards in the deck. So if I could do something like this that turns these two tunnels into one and then close off that one, that's great. But there are three different play modes, which we'll talk about now, that will change up your goals ever so slightly. The first of those is Catch Bandita, and that's going to be everything I just described. As long as we can close all the tunnels before our deck runs out, that means we've stopped Bandita from escaping and we win. The second mode is called Help Bandita Escape. Where we're we're gonna do the opposite. We're trying to make sure she can get out of here. In this mode, we introduce a ladder card, and that's gonna be shuffled somewhere into the deck. We're trying to make sure somebody can find this ladder card, so we kinda of have to wait till somebody finds it, and then plays it to close off a tunnel. This makes sure she has an escape route once all the other tunnels are completed and closed off. And the third mode is the Lover's Escape, which actually uses the main Bandito card from the original Bandito game. So you do need the original game to play this one. This mode adds some extra difficulty in that you're trying to help both Bandito and Bandita escape together, which means we're going to start with the same Bandita card as usual. We're going to keep the ladder card in the deck. We're going to add the Bandito super card to the deck, and we have to have played Bandito somewhere out onto the board and the ladder out somewhere onto the board to win. Now obviously this is difficult because playing Bandito adds five or six extra entrances, our choice, uh, so this is probably the hardest mode in the game, but we had a fantastic time with it. And the last thing Bandita adds to the game is going to be item cards and alarm cards. So there are item cards that work just like normal tunnels, you have to play them as normal, but when you play them they have a special effect. The first of those is going to be the water bottle. When you play that, nobody is allowed to communicate at all around the table until your turn comes back around. Next is the dynamite, which means you have to or get to play one extra card card from your hand right away and then draw two to replace those two. The broken tool is similar except this one makes you play all the remaining cards in your hand right away and then draw three cards to replace them. The broken tool is often on really handy cards so there's a little bit of a give and take on this one you get a really good card but at the cost of a broken tool the map is actually going to let you remove any three cards that have already been played somewhere on the table as long as doing so doesn't split any of the tunnels into two and the backpack which actually only shows up on this one card is going to let you draw a card and then permanently increase your hand size by one Last, there are two alarm cards in the deck, and we actually know these are coming because there are these little icons on the back of them. It's good to know these are coming because whenever a player draws one of these at the end of their turn, they have to immediately find a place to play it on the board and activate its effect. One of them makes us immediately discard five cards off the top of our deck, which kind of shortens our timer for the game because when the deck runs out, we lose. And the other makes everyone around the table discard a card and then permanently decrease our hand size by one, so this one hurts. We're gonna keep playing cards and drawing cards to replace them until we either complete our goal and win the game or run out of cards and lose. All right, so we just finished our first two games. We tried two of the different play modes, uh, and they're great. So it took us about 15 minutes to play the initial standard play mode where you were trying to just close off all the tunnels by finding cards that either meet each other up or find the flashlight cards that'll close off a tunnel on Bandita. And that took us 15 minutes. That's what the box says it's supposed to take, and that felt like exactly right for us. And we won, so that was awesome. We also played the little lover's escape mode where you're actually using one of the, the main cards from the Bandito game. So this is what ties in the original. If you have both games you can play this mode and this it kind of it, by its very nature makes the game longer because there's going to come a point in the game where you are adding a big old card that's going to add a bunch of extra routes to the table and you have to play this card to win so that one took us 20 or 25 minutes we're still not talking an hour long game it's pretty quick and we had a great time with it yeah i don't know it's bad news i'm gonna do this good luck team 
Yeah, I... well, apparently some of us like to be a hey. team player. Wow! Hey, look at the guards. <laughs> because they up. just drew a, drew a good card. Look at the guards. So, uh, I drew an old I mean, the now. only good thing yeah. we can do here is to just close it. I think things yeah. only get worse if you don't have a great card like that. Okay. So. All right. Um, so now we're down to the West Tunnel. Yeah, piece of cake. Piece of cake. As a fan of the original Bandito, I like the fact that they just didn't do a pure reskin and just say, this one just has a, has a girl. Yeah. They added in all of these other cards which do different things. You have the objects like the map that lets you remove cards or the dynamite that lets you play extra ones. And these really definitely changed the way the game played. Oh, yeah. um, even though we didn't always quite obey the water bottle, <laughs> yeah, and I really want to hit on that that I felt that the the objects it added a little bit of complexity to the game. Um and they were really balanced. It added good things and bad things. And, and yeah. you know, there was a time where I had the map card in my hand that lets us remove three cards from the board. Like, that's an amazing power, but it's three cards. And at no point did I have three cards that I wanted to remove. So trying to time when to play that really, really mattered. So I like cooperative games a lot. Me and my group play a lot of cooperative games. Um, and this one is... Uh, Little card games like this sometimes can be easy to have one person kind of play the game for everybody else. And in this one, you can't do that at all because you have obviously secret information, um, but also sometimes you, what you think is the perfect play is never gonna work out because of the, the bad cards in somebody else's hands or or the different routes that they wanna try and plan out. So um, I like that everybody's decisions affect everyone at the table, but there's no way for one person to tell anybody else what to do. <laughs> Pause. I, 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 you, you, you. So if I play the, <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix, <laughs> that's actually ooh, that's as Ian would say, a spicy <laughs> meatball. <laughs> All right. yeah, perfect. It's the dynamite <laughs> into the broken tool. Oh, big. So what I like about Bandito, uh, coming off of what Ian was saying, how you got this game where no one can dominate, mm -hmm. it's it's actually the next level from that where you rarely get to be the hero and you can't like if it stumbles in where you have that great card at that time that's because everyone else ahead of you set you up for that not knowing what you had mm -hmm. and i love that feeling of okay you know what i don't have the perfect play so all i can do is try and make good solid plays to set it up that someone else when they've got the right card at the right time they can be the hero what are you doing ian <laughs> what are you doing what are you doing? Hey, that's the Ian. Thing of the game. Uh, Ian. Thing of the game. Oh boy. Big. Boom. Oh, big. Easy mode. Stuck forever. Yeah, and that same stuff makes for a really interesting tie-in to the balance of the number of people you're playing with. The the more people you add, the more distanced you are from getting to play again and knowing what cards are at the table, because there's always three cards per player. If you have two players, you have half the cards in play at all times, and you know half of the cards available that we can get out on the table. Uh, if you're playing with four players, you know way fewer, but it also means we have twice as many options of cards, so there's a better chance somebody's going to have that perfect card in hand that'll solve this issue we have. And it also means that because this game goes all the way down to one player, it makes for a really fascinating solo puzzle game where you always know all three cards, but <laughs> There's only ever three <laughs> cards available, which could be terrible. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to make some terrible plays, but you know exactly the tools you have to try to repair those plays. Um, so I think it's it's just really well balanced at every single number of players you could play the game with. All right, I believe that does it for Bandita. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We had a really fun time playing. Hope you had a fun time watching. As always, leave a comment if you got a comment. Check out our online store if you want to see all the cool games like Bandita. And if you hit the subscribe button, it means you get to hang out with us every week when we post a new video. Thanks for watching us this week, and we will see you next time.